Let's review Joshua Bronze's uh, platform. This was starting out to just be a uh, Charlotte Perez versus uh, Joshua Bronze. I'm taking a compare and contrast in Perez's platform with Bronze's platform. So here's just a simple list of Joshua Bronze's, who's running for Republic City Council District 3 against the incumbent Ed Brown. This is his platform. He wants solar trees galore all over Pueblo City to increase the walkability. Josh Bruns likes the Swedens turning their trash into electricity program, as does Mark Aleph, as does Charlotte Perez. Free and accessible recycling center. So he wants to do what Chris Nickel was saying that he was going to do, but he did it. He actually wants to get one that's free, so that way people want to drop their shit off. So much trash all over the damn city. If we had a free place. Joshua Bruns wants to use the technology that we have in order to, you know, it's the 21st century. Jesus Christ, right? There's a thousand years, two thousand years. We're beginning those two thousand, right? We're starting the next millennium, the next, uh, well, that's a thousand. Is that two? Millennium is one. Anyways, it, there's another thousand years, right? And know what Chuck Norris said about Barack Obama. If he gets reelected, we're going to have a thousand years of darkness. So, whew. I'm glad we, you know, missed that bullet. Thanks for warning us there, Chuck Norris. You were a uh, fucking, well, I don't know. Unless you could say that Obama paved the way for Trump. If you say that, you might have an argument. But he believes in net neutrality. He believes in technology. Jason Munez, he's got an idea, a Wi-Fi idea. And uh, Josh Bruns adds a worker-owned to that equation. So he wants Wi-Fi, but he wants it to be worker-owned. So he believes in, that's jobs, right? Creating jobs. Charlotte Perez, Jason Munez, and Joshua Bruns. They all agree with Wi-Fi. I'm starting to think if you get three people that agree with an idea, then that's uh, a consensus. Isn't that what Charlotte Macaluso? And that was, all you need is three people to get a consensus. What? I got three people. Three people's on my side. So that's a consensus. So that's uh, <laughs> hilarious. And uh, But they can all work together, right? Jason Muniz, Charlotte Perez, and Joshua Bruns all believe in the Wi-Fi idea. Let's get Wi-Fi to Pueblo City. Let's get into the 21st century. Let's destroy the digital gap. Let's give the poor people who've never had Internet in their entire lives. Let's destroy that digital gap. There's so many uses that having uh, Wi-Fi would have. There's one caveat with my... Citizens for a green Pueblo, just make sure it's not Big Brother spying on everybody. So make sure that shit's not. Bruns is a genius. He's a thinker. He's a philosopher, young, bright scholar, 30-something, maybe I think exactly 30 years old. So that's good. This is new blood, young blood, new blood, brand new. You know he's not corrupt. You know he don't know who these fucking people are, right? He's going to get in there and just do a good job. That's perfect. Newcomers are awesome. I want all of them to be newcomers. Just initially, my gut reaction when it comes to an income is, uh, no, there's a 95% incumbency rate in the United States, and there's many reasons for it, but I would say a major reason for a high incumbency rate is that they're entrenched in power. They've been in power. The newspaper guys, they love them and shit. They get this news stories, and so power, you know, just loves power, and they take care of each other. So he's a smart person. He's smart, thoughtful, you know, young, bold, dynamic, and he's not, uh, you know, I think he would be a great representative. I think he would be an incredible city councilman. He would be one of the best that Pueblo's ever had to go. Uh, his number one issue is a war on poverty. So you're going to get a war on poverty with Josh Bruns, a war on poverty, just like LBJ, the great society. So a war on poverty, that's the only way that poverty is going to be addressed, right, if somebody first says it's a problem and then, you know, B addresses it, but most people say it's a problem, but they don't want to think about it or some other shit. Uh, Josh Bruns gives us a vision. He gives us a broader vision for what Pueblo City can become. So this is an incredible opportunity for, the, for District 3 and for anybody outside of District 3, tell District 3 to fucking vote for Josh Bruns. Do not vote for Ed Brown. Unless Ed Brown comes up with an incredible progressive platform, do not vote for Ed Brown. He doesn't even respond to the voters' emails. He doesn't, Ed Brown doesn't even respect the voter to respond to them. Well, if he's not going to respond to me as a candidate, he's 25% of Pueblo City have been poor for centuries. 25%, one out of four Puebloan people. So just walk down the streets, one out of four people in Pueblo. 
If you're, you see three people, one of you is poor. And so that's 25% been poor for a century, so having a war on poverty, that's amazing. That's brilliant. And, you know, I'm not even for sure what uh, an $81 million budget can, uh, you know, what that can accomplish. Over one-third of the budget goes to the police department. So, you know, there goes a third of the budget, so that, what, leaves us maybe 40 to $50 million left? And then what the hell is that being spent on, right? Some public works and, you know, some other shit, but public safety is over 50%, but that's including fire uh, department too. So public safety gets 54% of the budget. They get over $40 million, and then that only leaves us with what? Less than $40 million for everything else. So, you know, what else? Josh Bruns likes LBJ's war on poverty. He is emulating it. That's his number one issue. That is his main biggest, my God, that's, I think, fucking incredible. The poor people don't vote. That's a fucking problem. The poor people don't vote, but there are people who do vote that give a shit about the poor. And also just giving a shit about the poor and homeless that keeps them out of your yards and keeps them, you know, from breaking into shit and living in abandoned houses and, uh, you know, a lot of stuff. Taking care of the people prevents this shit from beginning, you know, the, in the first place. So if you actually take the root, right, go for the root. But uh, poverty, poverty is a death sentence. I'm glad he's speaking up. He's all about the working class, worker-directed enterprises, Wi-Fi. He wants Wi-Fi to be worker-owned. So I'm not for sure. We have to get the unions. What? Let's get the pick the carpenters' union. Whoever is the head of the carpenters' union, I want them on the Wi-Fi board. Whoever the hell the carpenters' union is, that's who I want. Bruns believes in local ownership cooperatives. He is just a really smart fucking cookie. Josh Bruns, smart cookie. <laughs> So he wants to keep Pueblo green. He's a, for 100% renewable energy too. 100% renewable energy. It seems like Mark Aleph, a conservative, but he kind of sees, you know, the direction. He sees the winds. And he's like, man, we got to do something. So he doesn't have any alternatives, but he's definitely like, we got to do something. This is fucked, right? This is so fucked how they're treating us. Why are our rates higher than everybody else? That's, uh, and then they want to charge us more for the light. For LED lights, so they put these LED lights in now. That's you know they're gonna start jacking up the fucking prices for this shit, and uh, that is bullshit. That's fucking bullshit. And so we're gonna have to what buy a brand new company, start a brand new company. I think Sweden's trash to electricity. There's your municipal electricity company. So start a Muni electricity, and then Muni uh, electric. Bruns actually has a very conservative demeanor. So I bet you if you were to ask him, I did ask him actually, I asked him if he was left or right, and he said that he's independent. So I don't know what he actually believes, if he's a liberal or a progressive. I'll, you know, I wear my liberalism on my sleeve. I am voting for the people that have the most progressive platform. If you want to get my vote, then have a progressive platform. You don't have a platform, and you're not more progressive. So I personally think that Joshua Bruns is a progressive but uh, he may disagree with that label, and that's okay, right? Then that's okay. And so he wants to connect the people to the resources that they own. So he's not for giving handouts. He's not for just saying, you know, here's some food and here's a fish. He's like, here's a fishing pole. This is how you fish. So he's for, this almost sounds like Taylor Voss, don't teach the children what to think, teach them how to think. So they got to stay strong. They got to stand up. Probably some kind of democratic accountability with the Wi-Fi. So worker-owned. Democratic accountability, the board of directors and the CEO should all come from the poor class. There should be at least one homeless person on the board. That would guarantee that the working people are actually controlling this Wi-Fi thing. There should be a cap on how much your salary. If you make more than $50,000, you can't be on the Wi-Fi board. So this, he says when power is given to the people, they will reinvest in Pueblo because we live here. So he wants to give the power back to the people. He cares about the working class people, and he actually thinks that when the working class people are doing well, then the 1% of the wealthy will be doing well too. So he thinks that a rising tide will lift all boats, including the yachts. But he wants it to lift all boats, not just the yachts, which is what we've been seeing around here for quite some time. Now, he's a strong advocate for institutionalizing community oversight panels when it comes to Joshua Bruns believes in giving out periodic reports that is readable by all the common people. He believes in pure, direct democracy, pure, direct democracy. He actually, he loves the idea of charter conventions. He loves the idea, like in Athens, right, everybody comes together, like in the Gilmore Girls, a town hall meeting, but a true blue town hall meeting where we're all getting together, not just, 
you know, videotaping our political rock stars, but a true deliberative body that is trying to find the solutions to all of our issues and that encourages. We want the people to come in and to speak up not to monopolize the conversation, but if there is an issue, right, we want our people to be happy and we want them to be safe and we want them to, you know, be living a good, high-quality life. And if they're not living a good, high-quality life, then we need to give a damn. So Joshua Bruns is the man. District 3, I'll be so fucking pissed. <laughs> Josh Bruns and Charlotte Perez believe in periodic reports that are, you know, readable by the common people. So I think that'll happen. We'll get budgets that the common people will understand. They'll explain the budget, and maybe they'll actually send out little emails, right? Send out little email updates every month just to let us know what you've been working on, what's going on, keep us, you know, keep us abreast of the news, right? <laughs> I said abreast. <laughs> but that's, you know, I, come on. <laughs> so they both believe in periodic reports. Josh Bruns and Charlotte Perez can work on the periodic reports. And they both have different ideas for the goat head problem. She wants weevils, and then he wants worker-owned high-intensity guarding initiatives. So I think if you combine those two, the weevils kill the goat heads, and then planting gardens is a problem. Charlotte Perez is for gardens everywhere. She wants these victory gardens all over the place. And so, you know, they're both in favor of high-intensity garden initiatives so they can work on getting more people to garden and to, you know, pay attention to and to take some pride in their yards and to maybe raise some tomatoes or something. So Josh Bruns, man, he wants to fight homelessness through contour or crafting, which is just a cheap way to build a shit ton of houses. So he actually, that's, that goes to the heart of the matter, doesn't it? They're homeless, meaning they have no home, which is a crime in of itself. And so that's why I'm conflicted when I hear about the homeless getting arrested. What if instead of taking the police and arresting these homeless druggies, we use the police to scout and search out for in, uh, abandoned and forgotten homes that we can eminent domain and to look out for them, to get them in a home, to let's take the police. He believes in eminent domain. He believes in owner-occupied foreclosures. So he believes in, you know, uh, the owner needs to take care of it if they're not taking care of it, if they've totally forgotten about it, if they've walked away, if they just said, who gives a shit? Well, it's a blight anyways, and fuck them, right? Why are we protecting private, their fucking private property, probably some, you know, damn London banker anyways. And so we're going to protect the property of some London banker who doesn't give two shits about our fucking community. We tell him to pay his taxes. He don't pay his taxes, then we fucking take it. And then we use that for the homeless. So Josh Bruns is saying, look, we got houses already. We got empty houses right now. Let's use the empty houses and let's cure this homeless problem. And Josh Bruns and both Charlotte Perez, they believe in contour crafting. They believe in cheap housing. So let's use the housing and the buildings that we have right now. That's one way to solve the homelessness. And let's make a bunch of homes. They're homeless, so let's make some homes for them cheap. I believe he would be in favor of Tommy Farrell's one out of ten houses must be affordable. So for subdivisions, if they make ten houses, then pass a law saying that one out of ten at least must be affordable. So you can't just have these million-dollar acre lots, right? So I think that's a good idea. So I think Josh Bruns, you know, would be, he would be susceptible to an idea like that. I don't know what he actually truly believes on it. But that's, you know, on issues on poverty, on homelessness, just get a homelessness coalition, get a homelessness committee going, get a poverty committee going, get a Wi-Fi committee going, get all these ideas, you know, Sweden's Trash to Electricity Committee, municipal Wi-Fi, whatever, whatever fucking idea, get that committee started, and there's several other people that would already want to be a part of that committee to begin with. And then who do you know, right? You're going to need some of uh, the public's input. So he's in favor of constitutional conventions, charter conventions. He wants a check on three branches of government to prevent tyranny. He wants an aggressive arsenal of grant writers with the public input. So he wants to have open forums, and he really wants the community to be involved. I truly believe when Josh Bruns says he wants the community involved, he does. I, he might be a 
um, an introvert. So I think Josh Bruns is a private person. He's an introvert. But he could create, we got the internet, right? So why doesn't the city have open forums where it's easy for people to get online? If you want to uh, complain about the goat heads problem, then you have to click on this, go over here, do this thing, and it's, you know, it's, if you understand the internet, it's not that difficult. But there's some people that don't understand that shit. And so, you know, we got to meet the people where they're at. And they're not all, and then they have, you know, it's human needs. So if they're, you know, struggling, if they fall down, if they have health issues or Medicare, whatever, you know, whatever fucking problems they have, even if they don't understand the system, they, should. they probably have a, not a man crush, a, a sapiosexual crush <laughs> on Joshua Bruns. I love his mind. I love his brain. His brain is brilliant. And I think that he would be great as city council person and a great communicator explaining on what the fuck is going on. He's an outsider, a newcomer. He goes in there. He's going to be honest. Hopefully, you know, none of these candidates jump in there and just get corrupted immediately, right? They jump in, and then uh, you have one of the three few, the backbone, right? They'll just slip them $100. <laughs> hey, here's $100 if you vote for this. And then that's it. That's all she wrote, right? That's how corruption happens, right? Right like that, it could happen in a fucking second. But the way I see him, he's innocent, and he's honest, and he's genuine, and he's good, and he's decent, and he's new, and he's smart. He's talking about aquaponic gardening, permaculture. He's talking about grant writers and 